Hello, today I will show you how to make a vector illustration out of this banana in Inkscape. The first step is to import a real world image onto Inkscape. Now we have the image on our board. The image may come in way bigger or smaller than our drawing board. So you need to click on the image to have these handles. Then holding down the control key, grab one of the handles and squeeze in or expand your image so it has the size you want. Now we need to create a new layer so we have the image on one layer and our rat on the other. To do this, we go to layer, layers down here below, or we use the keyboard shortcut shift control L. Now this is our lowest layer. We need to lock it. You do that by clicking on this part lock to lock it so that we do not end up moving, altering or deleting the layer or any objects found on it. And then we will create a new layer down here by clicking on this plus sign, then naming the layer if we wish and choosing add. I hope you see how it is highlighted by a little gray shade so I know I am on layer number 2. This way we are going to draw our object on layer 2 using the one on layer 1 as guide while layer 1 is going to be inactive. Next we will use the Bezier Open tool and try to trace out the outlines of the banana. You may first think you have to do click and drag like we did for the mango tutorial, but you soon notice it can become cumbersome. In Inkscape, you can use the pen or bezier tool to create any kind of custom object or trace an image. And at times it suffices just to create straight lines to outline the object and bend the line later on to fit the object. So we are just going to trace some straight lines on the object by clicking here on the top left on this edge, then click here on the bottom, here to the side, here at this narrow part, and up here where I try to trace out the borders carefully, then click again on this side of the constriction, and next up here on the top, here on the top middle part, and here back at the origin to finish the trace. We are aiming at getting a rough trace with not so many nodes that we'll be able to bend later. You may be wondering, it does not look like a banana. However, the line created by the pen tool is already a path. We can now bend the lines to follow the shape of the banana by selecting the note tool up here or hitting N on our keyboard. Then I will grab the line here and bend it close. Grab it here and pull it out. Grab this node at the narrow constriction to pull it in. Then come to the side here and pull it out. Pull it out here on the bottom. Grab it here on the side and pull it out. Then I will come up here and pull the line in towards the end of the banana. Grab it here below and pull it in. And we realize the line is very straight here. To ease out editing, I am going to double click here with the note tool to create a new note that will give us more flexibility to adjust the line. Then I will pull the line out, come down here and pull it in. And we notice we have this handle here we can use to further adjust the curvature. Then pull the line in here and finally pull it out here. You notice we have a better trace now, don't we? If you have some hard spots like here below, you can smooth them out by selecting the node and coming up here to make the selected nodes smooth. And if necessary, pull again to adjust the curvature. Then I am going to pick up the Bezier pen again and quickly trace this brown base here by carefully clicking on the major outlines till I reach the end and close the path. I will pull that base out here to the right since we need it only later. I will now take the zoom to say about 150% and pull out a trace so we are able to see the image by its side. 
When done, I am going to move out my outline out of the way and over here so I can see the photograph. I will go to Object, Fill and Stroke to call the color palette up here on the right. Then we will give a flat color to the banana by using the eyedropper or color picker tool right here. I will hit the eyedropper tool, then find a nice yellow color here on the banana and click on my object to fill it with the color. Basically, what you do with the eyedropper tool is that you copy and use the color values from an existing image. Next, we want to select our Mesh Gradient tool. There are different ways of activating the Mesh Gradient tool. One way is to click on this Mesh tool here, then make sure this Mesh Gradient is selected on the Tool control bar up here, then Create Gradient in this field is also selected, then go ahead to define a number of rows and columns across which the gradient will transfer, and click on the edge of your object and double click. Here I have chosen just a 2x2 two two mesh. The object obviously has a lot of depth of field so that we definitely need more. But my aim is to get a simpler mesh outline I can easily manipulate at the beginning and go on to add the other nodes on the fly. The newly added nodes will follow the shapes of existing ones. Adding too many at the beginning would make the job difficult. We notice the mesh is divided into a lattice of rows and columns and up here you can see the number of rows and the number of columns we defined before. Looking at our original image, we notice that there are patterns running across that converge to and tapper here on the sides. And we also notice that we have a constriction here on the right. So I will go up here and select the Note tool and begin by pulling along the gradient stops so they take the shape of the banana. I am going to pull this middle gradient stop towards the middle of the fruit and adjust it a little bit so it stays in the middle. Then grab this one up here and pull it to the object. Then I will come here to the right, grab this uppermost one and place it on the tip here. Then grab this middle one and pull it to sit on the middle of the top here. I will zoom in to above 300 and use this slider below to centralize the tip of the object so it is easy to adjust the gradient stops here. You notice that since we brought these two stops very close, we have a squiggle line here which we have to adjust. So let us fix that. I will then click on the stop and then the handles will become activated. Since we wish to pull or push the line vertically, we are interested in handles that will point in the direction we want to affect our change. I am going to grab this handle here below, that is the little triangle head pointing up, and pull it in to adjust the line. Then click on this next gradient stop, and notice the handle associated with it is this one up here that turns to a triangle. I'm going to pull it down. I will now reduce the zoom to above 220% and pull this gradient stop below here up to the other end of the banana tip. I will increase the zoom again to say about 400 and search and grab the handles associated with this top and pull it in like before to smooth in this line. And we notice the line bulges below here so we grab this handle here below and pull it in. This looks fine. I will now begin from the right side up here, click on this gradient stop at the far right end and grab this handle that shows and pull it outwards to let the mesh fit the curvature of the banana. Then I will click on this gradient stop in the middle and grab this handle that shows and pull it outwards to let the mesh fit the inner curvature of the banana, just like that. And I will repeat the same procedure for this last gradient stop here on the left by selecting it and pulling its handle to let the mesh fit in with my object. 
Then I will grab these handles here further on the left and pull or push them in to fit. I will now repeat the same procedure for the left side of the banana by bringing all the gradient stops to sit on the top left side here and adjusting them like I did for the right side. I will do that carefully and a little faster now since you already have seen the skill when we were at just in the right side and then I'll come back to you. We now have our basic mesh outline on our object. We can do some little editing here and there if we need a better mesh fit. However, I will go ahead now since I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I will go now and call up the Mesh Gradient tool again, then come here in the middle and double click to create a new mesh line. And this will create a new line between the existing mesh lines. Interestingly, this line comes with its own gradient stops and handles and follows the contour of the existing ones. I will take Ctrl Z to take that line off and let us first of all adjust the mesh around this constriction here on the right. I will zoom in a little to just over 250% so we see that part better. Using the same principle of adding a new mesh line, we will double click here to have a line run across the constriction. Then grab this gradient stop and pull it in and repeat the same thing for the left side. And we will grab the handles like before and adjust our mesh around the object. And below here we notice it may be difficult to do so. To have more flexibility, I will create another mesh line here. Then select this node and then grab the handles and adjust the lines again. Beginning from the left, I will now click on this lower line or on any of the horizontal lines to add more vertical ones. I will do one here right close to the tip in case we wish to adjust the mesh there a little closer to fit the object. But I am going to spare adjusting this for this demonstration. Then I will add one more mesh line each side here. One will suffice for our demonstration, but you sure could have more in a real project. Then I will click on any of the vertical line to add more horizontal gradient lines. Then I will use the node tool, select a node, then go and select the eyedropper or color picker tool, hold down the shift key and click on all nodes along the path of this line and choose a color on the corresponding portion of the original image and I am going to repeat this for each of the major lines. It is always important to zoom in and out to let you easily pick the nodes. When you pick a color and realize it does not match what you wanted, you could quickly change it while the nodes are still selected and active. It may happen that you have nodes and handles overlapping or sitting on top of each other here at the end where you did pull them to sit tight. In such a case, use the skill for selecting objects lying under other objects as described in my video in the description section below. And this is going to allow you to select hidden nodes. I will now select the object and go to Stroke Paint, No Paint to take away the stroke. We now have a decently looking banana, but it looks too artificial. We may wish to add some of the brown bruise marks you see here. In the Mango tutorial, we did this by creating dots. I will show you an other way using the gradient lines. Double click on this horizontal line aside this middle vertical line to create vertical mesh lines. Then double click to create horizontal lines about this middle horizontal line. Now use the node tool and select this middle node or gradient stop. Select the color picker tool and suck up the color from one of the brown spots of the banana. I will click by the side to unselect and we notice we have a pretty naturally looking bruise mark. Let us also create a linear bruise mark by double clicking say here on the left to create more vertical mesh lines. Then use the node tool to pick this middle node, then the eyedropper tool and pick up a brown color on the banana. 
the reason we created three lines and used the nodes of the ones in the middle was so that the outer lines act as boundaries how far the chosen color spreads. I will now come quickly to this stump and give it a simple 2x2 two two matrix and color it by picking colors and dropping on the nodes. Since the skill set is the same like we have done before, I will quickly do that for you. Then when done, I will select it and go to stroke paint, no paint to have the stroke away. Then I will pull it to sit on our banana. And that was it. This is pretty easy than if you were to draw the banana using other means. And this video alongside the mango tutorial concludes with all the basic skills you will need for using the gradient mesh tool. And you could use this skill to draw just any sort of object out of a picture template. If you have been using the previous videos to learn how to do illustrations, please comment below and share your experience and expectations with those who are trying to learn it now. If this is your first time here, I will like you to give a thumbs up below and subscribe because this video series is about helping you to effectively illustrate and communicate research results or work. And this is going to change your study and work life positively. Otherwise, see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.